Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. It is the 18th of November 2020 and we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. So this video is very much needed. Why? Because I had been anticipating this level of 16.6k to hold as resistance as per my last video. But as you can see, we've really obliterated that level quite emphatically. Of course, I am very interested to see how the week closes. But looking on the intraday, I anticipate further upside with today tomorrow and certainly for the weekly close and so that's a good show of strength and i mentioned that in my last video any significant move through 16.6k would be a huge show of strength it would be triggering triggering the invalidation for the um, immediate bearish setup so that's what we're going to talk about in today's video what can we expect from here where's the next level of resistance how soon is it likely to reach that point and if it breaks that where can we expect price to go further? So these are the things we're going to discuss in today's video. So if interested, then stay tuned. Hey guys, all right. So very important video, as I say, very much an update video so if you want kind of the more detailed analysis on the long-term outlook check out my last video because i went into that in a lot more detail but essentially i had been anticipating this whole move up as being corrective which and the main reasons for that the main reason is this bit of price action here which does not look impulsive to me at all okay so i still maintain that and um I had mentioned previously how I was looking at all of these waves being corrective in nature, including this one, which obviously did go up pretty quick, which gives the impression that it is impulsive. And I know a lot of people have this as a finished correction here at 3.2K, and they're looking at this as a wave one and a wave two. Okay. Now, as I say, I don't think it is a wave one and two. Yeah, I still maintain that it's looking corrective up, down, and then this is a further correction to the upside. Yeah. But... I suppose I could accept that this may be impulsive. There are two ways of looking at it, certainly. And possibly it could be a wave two. I don't think it is. I think that's very unusual for a wave two to suddenly drop off like this at the end. Usually that's at the beginning of the wave two and then it ends more gently or in a similar drop off to the initial drop off. But to come down gently and then have a sudden drop off, that is unusual. Okay. At the same time, unusual things happen in trading. So... Uh, I can certainly accept it because there's many variables. You can argue there was a catalyst involved. Um, so you can get these kind of things. It's not breaking any rules. This, calling that a wave one and a wave two, to me, that's not breaking any rules. So I could potentially accept that. What I have big reservations about and huge problem accepting is that this price action here is impulsive. I really do not see it. I've, I've Honestly, I'm very happy for it to be impulsive. I'd love Bitcoin to, you know, I'd love to be able to say Bitcoin is going to 300K very soon. Um, but I've been trying to apply an impulsive count. I, I, I feel like it's very, very forced. Very, very forced. Certainly not the cleanest setup. Um, and by all means, if you have a clean or a particular count going up here, that you think is a valid count then by all means post it or share it if it's someone else's count i don't mind uh looking at it but for me it's just not it's certainly not glaringly obvious to me it looks a lot more corrective lots of overlapping waves going up uh, and this is the main problem i have with calling this all part of a, a really impulsive directional move to the upside allowing substantial moves higher in bitcoin yeah at the same time regardless of this being corrective you, you should all know there's a multitude of different corrective patterns, lots of expanding patterns, uh, running patterns. And so we can see a continued upside despite the fact that it's being corrective. Yeah. So that's what we're really going to talk about in this video. So we mentioned in the last video how 16.6K was a very, very key level. And getting through that was a very significant, it would have been a very significant show of strength. And that is what we're seeing now. So main reasons for 16.6K is it being the ODB, which is the oldest daily block. So if we really just on the daily time frame, we zoom in on this bit of price action. We've got these red candles here. Yeah, these really stand out to me as the oldest bit of price action where we get this daily block. 
and uh, yeah the upper range was at 16.6k so that was the level i was really monitoring and we to be fair we've blitzed it we really have we've absolutely shot through it uh, now that could be interpreted as hysteria but if it were to be hysteria then you shouldn't really be getting daily closes above it and i just see continued strength here i think it's going to keep powering through you can see we had a, an initial pullback here and then we've absolutely powered through it okay so that was one thing that i was looking out for and i mentioned uh yeah getting through that would be a significant show of strength and would require a reassessment of the count so that's basically what we're going to be doing now as i say for the reasons of this price action here all looking to me very very corrective the way i'd have to be looking at this is really as an abc flat pattern yeah and don't forget there's three types of flats so you've got your regular your running and your expanded flat so first of all just for the sake of labeling it we want to put the a the b and the c yeah let's just go with regular flat to begin with now i don't think we're going to see a regular flat here in bitcoin it's possible yeah it's the next bit of resistance but so I'm, I'm going to put it on to begin with just to discuss it basically means a very substantial pullback with uh, a c wave coming back down to 3.2k and i don't think because we're seeing that relative strength relative to the you know what stocks are doing uh, relative to all of the altcoins bitcoin is really powering higher i because of that i don't think it's going to come back down this low yeah for that reason i think we're probably more likely to see a running flat yeah so we see the b take out the a wave and then we see either an expanded flat, which I don't think is going to happen for the same reasons I mentioned that we're not going to see a regular flat. I can't see now that we're seeing this relative strength taking out this key ODB level at 16.6K. Now that we're seeing this, whilst you know we're seeing Bitcoin move higher relative to other assets, I can't see it suddenly shooting down. That wouldn't make sense to me unless some news came out that... It would have to be some very substantial news to really hurt Bitcoin for that to, to happen. Uh, and to be honest, I, I can only see it positive news really coming out regarding Bitcoin. And uh, so that's for that reason, I'm, I'm leaning towards the running flat. Yeah. And um, so I'm not going to give a C wave target because right now it's all about the B. Yeah. Where the B finishes. Now, the first bit of resistance is with a regular flat. And that's very clear. Basically, you get a double top. And so we came into, let's just call it 20K. It was near enough 20K. Uh, so that's probably where we get the next bit of resistance. As I say, I've got a feeling it pushes higher still. Um, but yeah, that's the next bit of resistance at 20K. And we'll have to see where it goes from there. But let me talk about the other potential targets. Should we see a running flat, which I suppose I am leaning towards at the moment. Um, so basically what i would do for that is do your, your fib uh, projections so if you just retrace for the a wave i'd be looking at the 1.236 as a target so that's at 30k and your next target would be 1.382 at 40k yeah so those are your two targets now what's interesting about 30k is you also have a nice fib uh, extension co confluence at that point if you extend this wave extend it from the bottom here you get a nice 1.382 extension yeah so that's as you can see just just above at 31k yeah so there is definitely a bit of confluence in and around 30k so that would be a very interesting level to watch so if we manage to get through uh 20k which would make it the regular flat yeah and i think it will because I'm struggling to see how it will allow for this huge impulsive C wave to come down following this uh, 20K being hit. Certainly possible, and I'm certainly looking out for it. I'd certainly be taking profits at 20K um, and allowing price to then push above 20K before um, looking to make capitalize on any moves from 20K to 30K. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm of the opinion that it pushes higher, as I say next target would be 30k okay now another reason that i've got reservations about all this being impulsive you know rather than this being a one two three four five and we just keep pushing higher and higher is the volume we are literally seeing falling volume if we look on the higher time frame so this is on the daily 
we look on the volume we're just seeing this descending profile here never good if you you know it's not what you want to see if you if you're you know long term bullish to be honest we're seeing this falling volume which isn't basically falling volume means that it's not validating the price and the price is moving up so it's not being validated uh, so it could largely be due to hysteria that said don't forget if this is a b wave and it is all corrective then you don't need that high volume yeah so you could still push up to 30k and 40k still be corrective and still have low volume relatively low volume yeah so there's still plenty of upside despite the low volume despite that looking corrective there's still scope to go to 30k 20k 30k 40k yeah those are all possible that's technical analysis for you it gives you lots of different options that's elliott wave for you it's always going to give you different options like that yeah and that's why i, I like to incorporate different tools to try and uh, get a better insight now if i was to look for um, the regular flat there is confluence with this pitchfork so this is using our first looking at the b wave basically so you've got your first pivot second pivot third pivot it's an original pitchfork and we found a bit of support off the 0 0.5 line and we've we could get a bit of confluence if it found resistance at the median line as it hits 20k yeah okay but that's if it is following this pitchfork because there's another very useful pitchfork um so that's the original but if we shift it to it's the modified yeah the modified shift is also very interesting and yeah you've got 40k that could be tagged if we hit the upper warning line yeah so that's certainly possible now I do think that although I'm not putting too much emphasis on the stock markets right now because we are seeing that kind of slight dissociation you know Bitcoin's really powering higher and it's also powering higher against alts also you're seeing Bitcoin dominance really surging higher right now um, so that's why I don't think it's so important to incorporate what's happening in stocks but long term if we see a huge recession that is going to probably determine you know how high we go with this uh, move up here in Bitcoin okay now I've mentioned in stocks I have concerns that there could be a topping pattern right now but there's so many catalysts going on we've got the US election we've got Brexit and we've got COVID yeah all huge things that could have a an impact on the world economy yeah so these things are on the horizon the next three months is probably going to give us a hell of a lot of information on that but I feel like in Bitcoin you know the the big investors are kind of making up their mind here and they're probably saying regardless of what happens in the stocks we're going to be bullish on Bitcoin and uh, I think even if it does have a pullback it's going to have that bit of resilience and not come back as far and not get hurt as much as other assets basically so basically to summarize still looking at this as corrective main reasons being the falling volume this bit of price action that I really don't like as I say feel free to put in the comments any links or any ideas as to the count that you think suggests that this is impulsive I'd be very interested to hear that uh, but for me it looks very very corrective in nature um, so that's the reason I'm using this kind of ABC count yeah with that in mind it does mean it can still go a lot higher yeah you can get a play out like this allowing it to go a lot lot higher okay um, so we'll see how it plays out for me I had to look at this differently now that we've gone through 16.6k this was a huge level to take out the other thing I want to address a very key indicator that I look at is Camarilla pivots so if we just pull up the Camarilla pivots let's clean up the chart let's go on the weekly so literally on all the high time frames now we're above the R4 which suggests that we're going into a strong uptrend yeah so here we went above the weekly r4 all the way back at 13k if we go on the daily time frame now again we're above the r4 yeah so for this to be weak when you're on the daily this is looking at monthly periods so it means that the month has to finish beneath the r4 to suggest that we're going to see a bit of weakness yeah i can't see it's obviously possible we could suddenly shoot down and finish the month beneath the r4 but the way it's looking i don't see it i think we finished quite comfortably above the r4 telling us that we're going into a strong uptrend here okay might be a bit premature to say that but that's what i'm seeing right now uh, so then if we drop down into the hourly again we're way above the r4 
Now the way I've been intraday trading this now is off of the 15 minute because what I was initially thinking is, so if we bring on our other annotations, so this is the uh, level of 16.6K, I was thinking, you know, getting above it and then uh, coming down and retesting it and then going higher. Now you, you can see here, we did have that. We went above, flagged and pushed higher off of 16.6K. I was anticipating us then to come down and retest. It didn't happen, so it didn't allow me to jump in on the trade. So now what I'm looking at is the 15 minute Camarillas to uh, get involved because it's gonna be very volatile. It's gonna move up very fast. So I think it's only, there's a move up to 20K, which I mentioned there's some resistance there. And the only way to really jump in on that is looking at these intraday markers. And I find the Camarilla pivots very useful. You can see once we broke above the R4, telling us we've got strength, we managed to push up into the next daily window, hit the R4 very, very nicely. And then we shot down and found wicks at the S3. So we pushed higher. We're now back above the R3, dip beneath it, support off the R2. And now we're making these higher lows with a kind of a horizontal top here. Looks like a triangle that wants to break upwards. And so I'm looking at this as an opportunity to jump in on a long now. And I think the next target could be a very swift move to 20K. At which point, again, I'd be taking profits there. And then looking at the reaction, it could absolutely shoot through 20K. But regardless, whatever happens, I expect there to be a bit of a bull flag in and around 20K that would allow to get back in uh, for any long positions yeah but I would not want to be holding on to a long position at 20k because there's certainly an opportunity for a big pullback a lot of volatility even if the long-term trend is still upwards maybe even to 30k you probably you'd need a very tight stop yeah and as I say I'm much more comfortable um, entering the trade exiting at a key level and then monitoring what happens at that key level looking for a bull flag and then getting back in. That's a much better way of protecting your capital, in my opinion. That's the way I go about it. That was the reason that I mentioned in my last video, from 11.5K to 16.K, that was the trade I was interested in. At 16, once it hit 16K, I was no longer interested in the, in, you know, in the move up to 16.6. And um, so yeah, I missed out on this bit, admittedly, but I'm happy to accept that it saves me you know, in, in, it saved me many times in many trades, uh, you know, of these ferocious pullbacks that you get. Yeah. So don't try to capitalize on every single bit of price movement. Otherwise, you probably see yourself getting burnt. Um, so, yeah, as I say, we're looking at it as a uh, from a, a major flat. And I see a comfortable run into 20K now. We certainly have to look at it as a flat reason being if we go on the log sc uh, linear scale and um, if we do let's sorry let's clean up the chart let's take off the camera the pivots uh, back on our linear and then yeah if you do a fib we have gone through the 0.886 fib retracement now yeah so you can't really be looking at it as a zigzag anymore uh it's come it's really retraced very high from the all-time high gone way gone through the 0.886 quite comfortably we are hovering around yeah, they're still actually above it quite comfortably. So you'd have to fancy it, you know, really reaching 20K. And I think it's going to happen pretty soon, continuing this kind of parabolic move up. You obviously can look at the small, in, you know, smaller subwave counts on the Elliott wave count, but you'll have so many differing counts. Honestly, you'll end up getting stopped out. I, when it gets to this, I'd much rather focus on the higher time frame, not so much give so and not give so much attention to the lower time frame counts because the lower time frame counts will give you so many different uh options where you'll think it's topped and then it turns out to be extended and the reason is we're following bigger bigger indicators we're following catalysts we're following the higher time frame um levels so and we're following hysteria also so um these are things to take into consideration so i'm not too interested in the smaller elliott wave count in this move up yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm focused on the 15 minute Camarilla pivots at present to time any trades to 20K. At that point, I'm waiting to see what happens. If we see a bull flag, excellent. I'll be very happy to jump in on further long positions. Um, but yeah, what I want to see, confirmation, if we need a weekly close above 16.6K. And if we get that, it's a huge show of strength, certainly allowing for price to push on to 20K. Um, so yeah,
that's how I'm looking at the charts right now. I wanted to get this chart, uh, this video out there just to give you my thoughts. Uh, and as I say, put put your views in the comments. I'm very happy to hear your views. I I look at the markets objectively. I'd love Bitcoin to go higher. I really would. You know, there's no in, there's no incentive really for me to tell people it's bearish. There's really not. Um, people have suggested I've been too bearish, but. If you if you if you want to call me back too bearish, please explain this bit for me. Yeah, this is the main bit I'd like you to explain because I'm I'm happy to discuss these things, debate these things, but um, yeah, we've got to have some explanation for why we're going up on low volume, why we're seeing uh, this looking very overlappy in sentiment with the wave structure. Um, but I cannot ignore the fact that we pushed through a very key level of 16.6k. This is a huge level. I've been monitoring it for a very, very months upon months. I've been monitoring this level, uh, and I cannot ignore the fact that we've pushed through it strongly. Cannot ignore that, and for that reason, I've been forced to, you know, reevaluate. And basically, that that justifies what I've basically been saying. As I say, short term, looking for 20k, and I will be watching it so closely at 20k because, in my opinion. We could easily be pushing onto 30k from 20k, uh, and yeah, we'll see. Obviously, it's a very volatile moment. We've got a lot of um, catalysts on the horizon, as I've mentioned, fundamental catalysts. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But um, yeah, those are my views right now, guys. Feel free to leave uh, your views uh, in the comments. And um, yeah, if you find value in these videos, and if you like, you know, being updated regularly, then leave a like. I obviously do appreciate that and uh, yeah and I appreciate all your support the channel is growing and uh, yeah thank you once more for that all right guys take care